journalist and Twitter Files author David Zweig shared yesterday that a new Journal of American Medicine paper on COVID vaccines for children finds a safety signal for peri or mitocarditis in 12 to 17 year olds buried in the text. Zweig says he calculated 93% of the studies confirmed samples are male, yet the rate for young males is not in the table, abstract or anywhere else. He's asking why they might obscure data for the relevant cohort. So I also included a tweet from New York Times contributor Benjamin Ryan about the report, and he said a study of safety outcomes after the COVID vaccine for youths 5 to 17 years old found that myocarditis and pericarditis were the only safety concern out of 20 analyzed, occurring in 39 cases per million doses within seven days and only in 12 to 17-year-olds. David Zweig joins us now to elaborate on what he's uh, noticed in this data. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me again. So what do you think is the is the relevance here? You're saying uh, a, a parsing of the data that you'd like to see was partly obscured uh, because it was not broken down by, by sex, although 93% were male. So do, do you think there would be a more illust illustrative uh, breakdown if it was just the male, even though most of them were male? Right. Yeah, so the reason this caught my eye is this particular study, I don't think came out with anything um, particularly revelatory. Um, most of the findings at a quick glance um, echo with what we've seen regarding myocarditis and pericarditis um, incidents following vaccine in, in young people. So it's not that the results themselves were, were you know, some sort of uh, bombshell. There, there's been, you know, a dozen, if not several dozen studies um, that have come out in the last couple of years on this. But what did jump out at me was the fact that the sort of top line finding was, don't worry, here the rates, it's very rare, and they cite the rate for, uh, for five to 17 year olds in general. Um, and there were two things that were strange about the way they, they worded that. They say here, um, it should be noted that myocarditis or pericarditis is a rare event with an average incidence of 39.4 cases per million doses administered in children five to 17 years. Now, here's the interesting thing. In the same study, they tell you that the, in the age bracket where it really only mattered were 12 to 17 year olds. So the first question is, why would they have a top line finding where they talk about the rate from five to 17 when we know the real group we're worried about that according to their own data, we're 12 to 17 year olds, that's number one. And then number two, why are they talking about males and females together when we know that almost all of the cases were in young males according to their data in their own study? And that's, and we can get into this, but this is a pattern that I've seen over the last several years. Um, in uh, regarding a bunch of topics, but in particular related to um, myocarditis incidents following the vaccination. Because so, cause really, uh, just to follow up, <laughs> honestly, even from like a pro-vax perspective, I guess, like, I guess you could look at that and say th their, their top line finding is um, misstating a little bit uh, if, if it's if it's not leading with the fact that these were all uh, or these were overwhelmingly male subjects, they could actually be um, disguising how safe it is for female subjects, or that they just don't have relevant data on that, given that it was mostly males, right? I think that's a really good point. Or it's like so if you have one group that that's you know the vast majority of these um, adverse events. Um, and then you're bundling it together, that does two things. The one I'm most worried about is obscuring a higher incidence for one particular group, but as you noted, what that also does is it artificially inflates the incidence for the other groups who are at lower risk. Um, so there's really two things that are happening, and this has happened repeatedly. One of the things that I wrote about a couple years ago, um, Rochelle Walensky, the CDC director, had mentioned this was when the, the um, myocarditis really started getting into the news more. And she did a press conference and said, don't worry, look, it's like 30 to 40 incidences per million. Um, and, you know, it's mostly self-limiting, don't worry. But what she didn't say was she bundled everyone together. The rate for young males was more than double. Um, that instance in the CDC's own data that they presented at, at, a, um, at one of their um, advisory committee meetings um, shortly before Walensky's statement. So there's this pattern, and, and, and this study that did it again is, is not the only one, whether it's from the studies themselves or whether it's from the CDC director, where they continue to not 
specifically mention young males and in particular age bracket and instead you take that and then just bundle them. I've seen studies where they include it from 12 year olds up to 34 or 39 year olds. Again, it, this is against the sort of basic principles of epidemiology and really against common sense. You don't need to be a public health expert um, to sort of see why this would be problematic when you continue to present the data in this manner. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I just want to be really clear about what the top lines of this really are. They looked at 39, uh, sorry, they looked at tw uh, uh, 20 different kinds of potential risk factors, ailments, side effects. Out of those 20, there were only two with these uh, so-called safety signals, meaning an unexplained correlation between the treatment and this bad outcome. That, that seemed to show up, which were myocarditis and pericarditis, these like inflammation of the heart. And that the incidence of those things occurring among the people studied was 39 cases per 1 million doses. So the argument here, now, and moreover, you're saying that because they are lumping in males and females, and we know that myocarditis, the incidence of myocarditis from other studies is higher in young men, that it is obscuring that the number could be, you just mentioned another study, twice as high as it might otherwise be. But in this particular study, 93% of the people in the sample are already male. So at best, you would have a 7% increase in what the number, the incidence rate is going to look like if they were all male, assuming that there's none, basically zero in women and it's all in men or girls and boys. And so are, are what we, are we focusing on here is that instead of, say, 39 cases out of a million of myocarditis, there might be 43 cases out of a million of myocarditis, and that this is, you know, I think that my, some people might be asking, is that really so significant, statistically significant that it is evidence of an intent to mislead as opposed to an, an, an attempt by the researchers in the first instance to basically focus on men or boys because they know to your point, the boys are the people that are most affected by this particular disease. I think you're a little confused about the data in the study. The, the, they, the study was of males and females, and I believe they were roughly uh, equal in, their, um, in the representation in the, in the participant pool um, that they included. Um, but of the cases of myocarditis, um, I'm looking at the, at the study here, 25 of, 20, of the 27, they, they they did a, which, which is smart, they did a sort of um, chart review where they kicked out actually a bunch of cases. So the, the rate of myocarditis was higher. They did a more stringent um, process where they um, threw out a bunch of them. So of the sample cases that they looked at, um, like 93% of them were males. Do you understand? Okay, so, so, so it's, it's, it's yes. actually, it's not the way you were presenting it. It's, it's almost all of the cases were males, even though the entire pool that they were looking at were males and females. Again, the findings here are not particularly revelatory. The thing that's interesting is, so let, let's do a hypothetical. Imagine there's a treatment or a, a, a vaccine or, or a medicine that affects one particular group more than other groups. And sometimes this happens for any number of reasons. So imagine it's, um, women of color have an incidence rate that's double or triple that of the general population. And a study comes out and they say, great news, the incident is one in 100,000 um, for whatever the thing is. You know, we looked at the study, you know, we looked at the population, this is fine. I suspect people would be, find it problematic that they didn't say, but wait, the incidence for um, women of color is actually four times that. Do you understand what I'm saying? And no, this is something saying. that I'm has happened I'm confused about your, your tweet, though, David. You tweeted, mm -hmm. buried in the text, I calculated 93% of confirmed sample are male. What did you mean by that? Does that mean that 93% of the people study in the study sampled are, not, are male? 93% no, of, um, of the confirmed cases. This is after they threw out um, a bunch of cases. 93% of them were male. Almost all of the of the incidents of myocarditis in this age group were in young males. So is that not a disclosure of the exactly the kind of reporting that you'd like, that this is something that is overrepresented in men or boys, and that people who are looking to vaccinate their 
young male children should have more concerns about than if they have young female children? Right. So the, the thing is, this is, I'm looking, this is buried way, way down in paragraph, you know, 15 or something in there. And what I'm saying to me, uh, it, that, that should be in the abstract, which is, you know, runs at the top. That should be in the conclusion. Here's the group we're concerned about. This is, we know that this particular cohort of people, young males, for, for any number of reasons, they are the ones who are most affected um, by this adverse event related to the vaccine. And it, that the only mention of that where it's sort of sliced out is, you know, buried in the text and, you know, way, way down in paragraph whatever. Um, typically in a study, what you would like to see researchers do is in the abstract itself and in the conclusion, they're going to highlight the most important finding for what group are we concerned about. The great news about this study, which again is not new, is that Look, it looks like these, by and large, are very safe. They didn't find a signal in any number of other um, adverse events. That's great news. Um, to me, what's interesting is you have something, there is a particular group we're worried about. And once again, the information related to this particular group, what we want to know, wasn't, that should be in the title, practically, or at least should be in the abstract, in my view. And from talking with epidemiologists, an infectious disease specialist, that is typically what you want to do. If you actually have the granular data on a particular cohort who are most affected by some, whether it's for vaccines or a medication or something else, that's the, the, the thing that you really want to highlight. And as I mentioned, you know, the example from, from Rochelle Walensky, you know, it was a similar thing where she said, oh, it's 30 to 40 cases. Um, but, but, you know, but she didn't, but she grouped everyone together. So this, to me, what, what the reason I tweeted about it is, again, this fits in a pattern that we've seen um, repeatedly about sort of bundling one, the, the, the data from one particular group and grouping it either with both sexes or grouping it with a larger age bracket. Um, and so much so that it's not just in the studies, but you have the CDC director um, grouping things in this manner. And like I said, if you can imagine a different cohort, a different group, whether it's um, women or a certain minority groups or whomever it is, where this same type of thing was happening, I, it's, I think people will be very upset about it. Hmm. David, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.